Hello students, welcome to Learners Planet. After discussing a lot about the cell structure and the cell organelles, now what we have to concentrate on is the labeling part. Uh, we know basic theory part of course, but sometimes they in the exams, they are not asking the theoretical questions. They are simply asking the labeling type of questions, isn't it? And of course the common organelles or the common diagrams which are asked from the chapter fundamental unit of life is chloroplast. Chloroplast is one of the example of it. Otherwise the other parts or the other diagrams that are often asked are uh, the uh, cell that is it can be a eukaryotic cell or a prokaryotic cell or it can be an animal cell or the plant cell or different organelles like nucleus, chloroplast, mitochondria and so on. Right. So in this session we are simply discussing that how can we uh, label the diagram chloroplast. Uh, See, or you all can label it, but what we are concentrating on is how to speed up, right? And of course, that speeding is maintained with practice. Along with that, what you need to do is just remember the functions of each part of whatever you are going to label. So this is going to help you in preparing for the exams in the dual manner for theoretical purposes as well as for this labeling sort of questions. Right. So let us see uh, this picture that is of chloroplast. So students, this picture is of uh, chloroplast. Right. Now, uh, definitely there are different types of plastids and chloroplast is one of such example. Now, if it is chloroplast, then the type of pigment which is present in this plastid is supposed to be a chlorophyll. Right. And of course, uh, uh, what we are discussing here is the sidewise regression of this uh, organelle also. So let us start the labeling here. We all know that chloroplast is a double membrane structure. Right. And uh, if it is double membrane, then you, uh, you have to label the two parts here. That is this outer membrane and this inner membrane. Right. So you let us uh, uh, start writing here. So this first part of the chloroplast is supposed to be outer membrane, right? Whenever you are labeling the diagram, just have a recall of the basic structure in your mind and definitely this part is going to be 100% scoring for you, right? So beside this outer, the another part here is the inner membrane. So let us label this inner membrane here now. Now beside this, uh, as we just concentrate on this inner membrane, so we will remember that the inner membrane is not smooth. The outer membrane of this unit is actually smooth, but inner is having the inner folds inside. Right. They are having uh, uh, such type of folds which are arranged there in the layers. So these folds, a single fold inside uh, in this group is actually known as what? It is known as the thylakoid. Right. Now this thylakoid. It is this region where the pigment is actually present or in this inner membrane in this thylakoids which are arranged inside they are having the pigment chlorophyll where in the case of the chloroplast if it is any other type of plastid then definitely the different types of chlorophylls or I'm sorry the uh, pigments must be present right now these thylakoids as we are saying that they are arranged in the stacks right they are placed one above the other so this entire bundle uh, inside this particular structure or in the inner cavity uh, of the chloroplast, that entire bundle is together known as the granum, right? Further, uh, inside this, uh, uh, these thylakoids, the inner space is present. They are not stuck to each other, right? These layers are not stuck to each other. Rather, there is some inner uh, cavity uh, present over there. And this particular cavity, you can see here, this inner cavity is known as the lumen, right? Uh, further, now what is left out here? All these stacks or this uh, uh, these inner membrane, uh, they are actually bounding a space inside. And of course, that space is filled up with some uh, jelly-like substance. What this jelly-like substance is known as? This jelly-like substance is known as the stroma. Now, this stroma is, of course, rich in various types of biomolecules, uh, enzymes like vitamins or the uh, carbohydrates and so many other uh, biomolecules which are required for the functioning of this particular structure, 
right and of course to maintain the inner uh, structure of this particular organelle so this is how uh, you can simply just remind the structure and the labeling part becomes very very easy generally in this particular diagram students get confused while labeling this particular part that is the thylakoid lumen and the granum so just pay attention and think that these particular uh, lamellar structures or the single layer or the single fold here is known as the thylakoid and the inner space enclosed inside this particular structure is known as the lumen beside this the another thing that is a bundle that an entire bundle is known as the granum uh, of course beside this all other parts are quite easy to label here uh, and uh, the another thing that we can just brief out here is that uh, that it is the organelle which is having its own dna right but that particular dna is supporting the uh, functioning of this particular organelle that is chloroplast uh, the entire structural material is not coded by that dna but functional like for photosynthesis for the pigments and all these the uh, information is stored in the dna within this particular structure so for this reason this chloroplast is also known as the semi autonomous organelle beside this chloroplast which is another structure which is known as a semi autonomous organelle it is mitochondria that is the powerhouse of the cell uh, chloroplast what is the another name for this particular structure uh, it is the kitchen of the cell in plants it is responsible for synthesizing the food material why because the thylakoid is having the pigment chlorophyll and of course other pigments are also present and all these pigments together they are helping in the process of the photosynthesis so now you can just think that uh, while studying biology if you study it uh, if you just uh, go through this diagram and its uh, different parts and have a brief a briefing of the uh, properties the structure and the function side wise the subject becomes very very easy so don't get scared of biology it is a very interesting subject and of course what you need to do is the practice so this much for now and we are going to continue further in the in some next uh, other session goodbye